Hello friends, let's talk about vector layers. Vector layers are one of the most powerful tools in Pope Studio Paint. They're helpful for everything from line art to flat illustration. Using vector layers allows you to correct and edit lines that you've already drawn, scale images up and down without losing line quality, and much more. However, they can seem a little complicated and overwhelming at first. In this tutorial, you're going to learn everything you need to know to get you started working with vector layers. So let's get started. All right, let's start off by creating a vector layer to play around in. To do this, simply navigate to the layer menu, select new layer, and then vector layer. This can also be done by selecting the new vector layer icon above your layers as shown here. When you have successfully created a vector layer, it's going to appear in the layer menu demarcated by this cube icon. Anything you draw on this layer will now become a vector object that can be easily manipulated in post using the operation and correct line tools as well as the vector eraser subtool. So for one, objects drawn on vector layers do not lose quality when resized or otherwise transformed. When an object is scaled up or down on a raster layer, the default layer type in Clip Studio, it's going to pixelate. When the same object is drawn on a vector layer and then scaled, it will maintain its line quality, no matter how big or small you make it. This property alone makes vector layers the obvious choice for creating assets such as logos, line art for comics and illustrations, and even flat illustration. Additionally, vector objects can be easily duplicated on the same layer using Ctrl C and Ctrl V when selected with the operation tool, which we are going to discuss in more detail in just a second. But this makes vector layers a really handy tool for creating repeating patterns and other fun graphics. Finally, as discussed earlier, objects drawn on vector layers can be easily manipulated using the operation tool, the correct line tool, and the vector eraser subtool. These features allow you to correct, improve, modify, duplicate, and easily erase anything you draw long after you've drawn it. So let's discuss what each of these does and how to use it. The operation tool allows you to adjust the color, brush size, brush shape, and the path of objects on a vector layer. To use the operation tool, press O on your keyboard or select this icon from your toolbar. After selecting the operation tool, you can edit the main color, the brush size, and even the brush shape of all objects on your current vector layer. You can also transform these objects directly by selecting them still using the object subtool. This will allow you to manipulate this blue bounding box here surrounding the selected object as well as these white control points generated along the red line path. And a little tip here, you can select multiple vector objects at once by navigating to the object tool property menu, selecting the operation of transparent part drop down here, and then checking select area by dragging. And control points will automatically be generated when you draw an object on a vector layer. You, you don't have to create them initially. However, you can also add and delete control points by simply right clicking at any point along this line path and selecting add control point or delete control point. Control points are essentially like these articulated joints that can be maneuvered independently of each other, allowing you maximum control of each section of your lines. So control points can also be manipulated using the correct line tool. Additionally, this tool enables you to pinch, simplify, connect, resize, and even redraw vector lines. To use it, simply press Y on your keyboard 
or selecting this icon from your toolbar near the bottom. For more options when manipulating control points, navigate to the correct line tool here, go to the control point subtool, and then go to the control point tool property menu. This will allow you to move, add, and delete control points, as well as switch the corner, which looks like this. You can adjust the line width, even the opacity, and you can split the vector line here. Next is the Pinch Vector Line subtool. This allows you to pinch or warp lines within a selected area by simply tracing over the area with your brush. You can also use the Simplify Vector Line subtool to smooth out line paths by tracing over them with your brush. Use the Connect Vector Line subtool to create connecting line paths between two lines. You can also use the Correct Line Width subtool to scale the line width of any area you select with your brush. If you'd like to scale the entire line rather than a portion of it, select the Process Whole Line checkbox here. And it looks like this. The Redraw Vector Line subtool is really cool. So it allows you to trace over the line you drew and actually reshape it, creating a new line path with new control points along the way. Finally, the Redraw Vector Line Width subtool also allows you to change your line by retracing it, but in this case, it's going to retain the same line path. It will just change the brush size of the line. So these are some really fun ones to play around with. They're all useful in different circumstances. Finally, the Vector Eraser subtool allows you to target and easily clean up portions of vector lines. To access it, simply navigate to your Eraser tool and then select Vector Eraser. Once the Vector Eraser subtool is selected, navigate here to the Vector Tool property menu and you can choose which portions of your selected line you would like to erase by selecting between these three options. The first option will only erase the portion of the line you trace over with your cursor. The one I use most frequently is the second option. So the second option erases whichever vector line you trace over up until its intersection with another vector line. This is really good for cleaning up kind of like the offshoots of um, an overdrawn line. The third option will allow you to delete the entire line path of the selected vector line, regardless of its intersections or its end or starting point. And another little tip here, like I said, the second option, or race up to intersection, is perfect for cleaning up line art throughout the illustration process. It kind of allows you this margin to overshoot your lines by following through with your pen strokes which is a motion that can make for much cleaner and more natural looking line quality. All right, so as you can see, vector layers open up a whole new realm of possibilities when it comes to lining your art. As a recap, here are the top three tools I would recommend using for adjusting vector lines and where you can find them on your toolbar. And that's it. If you would like to see more content like this, feel free to stick around and subscribe. If this video was helpful to you in any way, please consider leaving a like or supporting me on Ko-Fi through commissions or my sticker shop or on Patreon where I post almost daily. My patrons are the reason I'm able to keep making comics and make videos like this so thank you so much guys and thank you to you for watching. I will see you next time.